Yo, what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Ben and I've been working in cybersecurity for coming up on two years now. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys seven career tips and things that I've learned these past two years of working full-time in cybersecurity. If you guys find this video helpful or insightful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers and we're gonna be doing a huge giveaway where I'll be giving away one Security Plus voucher to one lucky subscriber. If you want some more short form content and lifestyle content, be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at CyberWithBen. With that being said though, guys, let's go ahead and get into lesson number one. So the first lesson that I've learned from these past two years is when people talk about cybersecurity being a lifelong learning career, they're not lying to you. As soon as I started in this role in cybersecurity, there's so many different things to learn. There's different tools, you gotta understand how the organization works, um, different frameworks, things of that sort, different processes. And even after these two years, there's so much stuff to learn in addition to just the cybersecurity concepts. So my past videos, I've talked so much about being a lifelong learner if you want to succeed in cybersecurity, and that is definitely true. Technology within cybersecurity is constantly changing with the introduction of AI as well. There's just so much to learn and to continue learning throughout your entire career. And these past two years have really shown that. And as a result of that, being someone who is self-sufficient and who can also conduct their own research, whether it be going on Google, YouTube, or even using ChatGPT or AI to help you out and learn these different concepts at a quicker pace, that's really gonna benefit you, especially if you're a beginner in your career. Lesson number two is that soft skills are a career accelerator. A lot of people place a lot of emphasis on technical skills and knowing how to use different tools and coding. But at the end of the day, soft skills are gonna help you even more when it comes to accelerating your career and building connections. The best cybersecurity professionals oftentimes are the ones who are the best communicators. If you're a good communicator, you should be able to explain technical concepts to a non-technical audience or a bunch of different types of audience, whether it be a senior leadership audience or an intern audience or really anywhere in between. You should be able to adapt and be able to communicate according to your audience. On top of that, these soft skills really translate into being able to write clear documentation, being able to communicate clearly through email or Slack or Teams, whatever your company uses and also understanding how to read the room and when to speak up and when to listen during a meeting or during a conference. And having all of these soft skills will make you naturally more confident and easy to work with, which will really help you when it comes to accelerating your career and allowing you to grow. At the end of the day, one of the most important things you can do in your career is being someone who's easy to get along with and enjoy collaborating with for work. And even if you're highly technical and know exactly what you're doing, if you're someone who people don't enjoy being around and working with and collaborating with, it's still not going to benefit you. And lesson number three is networking equals opportunity. So this lesson kind of builds off of the previous lesson when it comes to soft skills, but networking really opens doors even in places where you have never would have thought there would have been an opportunity. So this means being someone who's easy to work with, like I said before, but also someone who's easy to carry a conversation with, who's really curious about other people and learning more about them, who's willing to attend different happy hours, conferences, meetups, uh, networking events, things of that sort. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, as someone who's more naturally introverted, this was something that was really challenging to me at first. But as you continue to say yes to these different opportunities, to different conferences, meetups, things of that sort, you'll be more accustomed to it. You'll be more used to these different environments and it won't seem as uncomfortable as it was when you first start off. And one of the best ways to carry a conversation or to meet new people is to be genuinely curious about what they do, what their background is, what they're interested in, what their passions and hobbies are. That's one of the best ways to naturally carry a conversation and really get to know people. And in turn, when you build this network and you meet different people and people get to know who you are and what your interests are, what your skills are, they're going to be able to reach out to you when an opportunity opens up because they remember exactly how you made them feel and what kind of skills and what you really bring to the table and what kind of person they're getting. So make sure to build your connections and don't burn any bridges when you're working in cybersecurity and it'll really benefit you throughout your entire career. Lesson number four is that there's so much opportunity within cybersecurity. I remember when I first started my career in cybersecurity, I was so focused on finding my niche in cybersecurity. But what I've realized over these past two years is that no matter what your niche is in cybersecurity, there's so many different opportunities, regardless of what kind of skill set you have, what kind of interests you have, and what you want to do, there's going to be something in cybersecurity for you. So in my case, I started off in a highly technical team in offensive security, and I knew from day one that wasn't for me. So after 
after a year of working in that team, I knew I wanted to pivot to more of a GRC or risk related role. And what I realized from that is that it's not the end of the world when it comes to cybersecurity. If you start off in a role that you don't really enjoy, there's so many different cybersecurity roles that fit different skill sets and interests. So if you start off in a role that you don't really enjoy or you're not interested in, it's relatively easy to go ahead and pivot into a different role. These roles in cybersecurity have a lot of transferable skills that you can bring over to your new role. So overall, cybersecurity has a lot of opportunity inside of it, and it's not the end of the world if you start off in a role that you don't enjoy. Lesson number five is imposter syndrome is real, and it's actually really common throughout cybersecurity, so you're not alone. When I first started my job in cybersecurity, I felt kind of out of place. I felt like I was the black sheep. I didn't know what I was doing. I was an entry-level associate surrounded by people who know exactly what they're doing already, who have years of experience, and it just felt out of place. But what I realized over these past two years is that everyone has a starting point and it's nothing to be ashamed about. As long as you have a curious mindset, you have an open mind and you're willing to learn and ask questions. Having those characteristics at the beginning of your career is even more important than what you know right now. And if you do feel an overwhelming amount of imposter syndrome, be sure to talk to people, whether it be a mentor, whether it be your manager or someone who is more developed in their careers. I'm sure they can walk you through their experience when they first started their careers in cybersecurity. And also be sure to talk to your peers or people who are in similar positions as you uh, starting off their careers in cybersecurity, I can guarantee you're not the only one running into imposter syndrome. So just focus on your own journey and your own development and take it day by day. And I guarantee you'll find a place in cybersecurity for you. So my last lesson and probably one of the most important ones is establishing a routine outside of work. Working nine to five can hinder your physical and mental health if you don't have an established routine outside of work. So this means making sure you draw a boundary between your work life and your personal life. So when you're off the clock, take your mind off of work and be intentional with spending time, whether it be building a relationship with your significant other, your family or your friends or working out or just intentionally relaxing, just making sure you set the boundary between your work life and your personal life and being intentional with how you spend your time outside of work. To be completely honest, guys, work takes up a huge portion of your life. So being able to allocate your hours and being intentional with the time outside of work is extremely important. So some of the ways in which I structure my week outside of work when it comes to prioritizing my physical and mental health include things like signing up for different leagues, whether it be a soccer league or playing pickleball or basketball with friends outside of work and also having a set gym schedule for after work, whether it be at 5 or 6 p.m. So usually I'll have three days for weightlifting, whether it be a push day, pull day or leg day. And then on top of that, I'll have different sports scattered throughout my entire week, whether it be soccer, pickleball or basketball. And then lastly, I'll have a recovery day uh, just to recover and relax and get ready for the next work day. And when it comes to my time outside of work, I really try to be offline as much as possible and to be really present with the people that I'm spending time with or be present in what I'm doing right now, whether it be recovering or really working out. I don't even wear headphones anymore when I'm working out because I want to really stay in the moment. I really enjoy going to the sauna for 10 to 15 minutes after my workouts throughout the week because it gives me an opportunity to just be quiet and be still and have an opportunity to meditate. So when it comes to your work week, being able to find different ways to really break up your week and be intentional with what you're doing outside of work is really important for your physical and mental health. And on top of that, your longevity of your cybersecurity career, because at the end of the day, your health and wellness comes before anything. So with that being said, though, guys, those are the seven biggest lessons that I've learned from working in corporate cybersecurity for the past two years. If you guys found some value in this video, go ahead and drop me a like and subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. We're on our way to 100K subscribers. And like I said before, at 100K, I'll be doing a huge giveaway where I'll be giving one of you guys a security plus voucher for completely free. With that being said, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at CyberWithBen for some more lifestyle content and short form content. And lastly, I also just rebranded this channel to Cyber with Ben. So hopefully you guys enjoy that and like that rebrand. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.